Hello guys, you might be hearing a lot about LLM Ops as more and more companies are looking to embed large language models into their applications and in their software ecosystem. The companies are looking for a coherent workflow to start using these LLMs. One of the most common use case of using LLM is to pick an LLM, then give it your own data and then ask a question from LLM by using the context of your own data. Now on the surface, it looks quite easy, but if you really think about it and if you start implementing it, it becomes quite cumbersome because if you're using your own data, you might have to think about a rag or retrieval augmented generation where you have to store your own data in some sort of vector database after converting it into embeddings or you would have to build some custom software or logic to start getting that intelligence from your own data. And then you have to append it to your prompts and then send that prompt to your LLM to get the results back. You would also have to host that LLM if you're not using any hosted service. So there are a lot of uh, moving parts here, distributed parts here. You might not be using your own vector database. You might be using some host hosted vector database like Pinecone or and there are heaps of others. So it becomes quite a hassle. So if you're looking to build a pipeline in order to facilitate your LLM usage or integration with your application, then this tool Vext could be a blessing. I have looked into it uh, a bit this uh, morning and it looks quite promising. So let's see how it works. I will drop the link to their website in video description. So go and create your own free user account there. One of the best thing which I found out right off the bat is that you don't need any credit card to put in in order to start using it, which is great. Okay. So once you uh, start for free and sign up with your email, then log in there and you'll be presented with this quite an easy to understand screen. The first thing I would suggest that you do is you go to your data set here on the left hand side and then specify any of your data set. So click on data set, just give it a name. I'll just call it um, my app data set. Click on create. And there you go, your data set is there. Now within that data set, select your data source. And it could be all of these things. You could have your own company's data, your personal data, whatever you want to search in plain text. You could upload any other file, maybe PDF. Uh, I haven't checked what sort of file formats are there, but I'm more than sure there'll be uh, quite a few. Then you can do page crawl, you can do site crawl, and you can even connect your Confluence. This bit I love because most of the companies, they have a lot of data stored in either Confluence, Google Drive, Notion. So it will be really handy to integrate your Confluence document here. The whole company confluence will be here and you can imagine the use cases for that but now let's go uh, with upload file and i'm going to select the file from my local system let me do that i just selected a pdf file here and then click on upload hopefully it is uploading yep so that is done and click on add source So it is in progress, which is nice. Maybe also let's add another data sort. I, uh, I think I have a free version. I don't think so. I can use any other source, so I'll just cancel it. But of course, this is another good thing. You're not confined to one data source. You can have multiple data sources. So I will wait for this sync process. I think what sync is doing is it is just creating some embedding, storing it some we are there and then you can use it from there. Meanwhile, it happens. Let's click on logs. Okay, so no logs are there at the moment. That is fine because we don't have a project. You can also obtain your API keys and they have a nice nifty API access to which you can use. And then in the app directory, I think there is an external integration that I showed earlier in the data source where you can integrate with Google Drive, Confluence and few other things like your team Slack, which is amazing. So, and this is amazing stuff that you can have your own AI based chatbot by using Teams. Beautiful thing. 
and this bit i really like that you know aws petrock which is one of my favorite services in aws so it is not there yet but as soon as it comes i'll make another video on petrock and this uh, hugging face integration i think this is going to open access to thousands if not you know hundreds of model so that should be awesome when it comes okay let's check our data set so our data set is ready as you can see here if i click on these three dots you can i think manage data you can add more and delete your data set but let's not do it let's go to ai projects on the left hand side and then click on project now we can give it any name i guess so just click here and then maybe i'll just call it my project that's it okay so a query is where the flow starts and then this is a pipeline you build easily you know so query first step output last step and then if you want to add more stuff just click on this plus sign here and you can see that from here you can generate a response you can search your own data set and you can execute a function so let's click on search data set and i am going to select the data set which i have just uploaded which is simply an oracle documentation which i have embedded so my app data set so this is just data set information number of inference okay so it says that determine how many results the ai will refer to per query okay so I j i'll just stick with once you can increase if you like but i just want to keep it clean so let's one one is fine let's save it that's done now we want to search from this data set let's click on this playground on the top right what are these three dots memory of okay so i'm not going to switch on the memory so this is my playground so i'm going to ask it what is uh, okay what are three background processes in oracle database so let's see okay it says the project is currently disabled please enable it to proceed with query okay let me see where is so it would be great if i could get any button here to enable it let me click it so this is my project i don't see any option here to enable it let me click on maybe ai projects okay so maybe this is a button to enable it so project is enabled I'm not sure why I would need to enable my first project because it should be enabled by default. Anyway, maybe it is uh, it has to do with some pricing or something, or if I if I have multiple projects and I need to enable it, maybe it would be good idea to enable the project by default as soon as it is created. Anyway, that is fine. Let's click on this project again. Click on playground. Let's try that query again. What are the Okay, I'll just say list any three background processes in Oracle. Okay, so now what the heck is this? So if I go up, so let's see if I can format it. Let's cross it. Search data set, let's click here. It says let's see generator response. Okay, so I haven't selected my uh, data set. Maybe I'll just move. Okay, so I'll just say generator response, select my model, and the available models are GPT 4, 3.5, and Tropics Cloud, Gemini Pro. Let's go with GPT 3.5. Creativity, or I think this is the randomness or temperature, I guess. Yep, so I'm just going to go with 0.7, which is fine purpose i'll just say you are an oracle dba or i'll say database administrator because well, that is what the document is about and then behavior behavior is uh, what is the behavior just click on it okay yeah okay so be specific and answer users questions as per data set okay, that is good let's enter this is good let's click on save i think this behavior bit could be more intuitive uh, instead of free flowing anyway 
now so that is done let's see um if it what it does now list three background processes in oracle database press enter let's see what happens now there you go so now so what happened earlier was it was raw data from that document but now we have we are generating the response with the help of llm we have tried to control its behaviors and you can see that it has very very correctly identified all three background processes there are various but it has just picked up three of them which is nice and then it has given me that information with bit of a preamble and the conclusion amazing stuff okay and if i click on see logs what it does now okay so there you go and this is output here and this is the rag score so that is nice it also is giving the rag score and any score under 80 suggests low relevance so it couldn't find it that is amazing because um, i think this it it was a the document contains that anyway no problem uh, let's go back to the project and then click here and then maybe generate response let's click on plus here okay so it has become very very minute let me for some reason uh, let me click on plus to make it bit bigger that is better okay now let's click on generate a response I'll just say GPT for GPT three, and then I'll just say you are, an Oracle database administrator, and I'll just say just uh, confine your output to one paragraph and that's it let's see what it does now enter and save now let me go to playground and then i'll just ask it list three Or maybe I'll say what is Rman in Oracle database. Let's see what this does now. Whether it confines it to one paragraph or not, that should be fun to watch. There you go. So only one paragraph. Spot on answer. Rman or recovery manager from that document. And if I go to logs, I just want to see the relevance of the rag here there you go so relevance is much better this time it is 80 which is considered good and still it is in a beta version and i have reached my limits for this uh, free version but still very very nice i mean i'm very impressed by it and then you can see that if you are stuck you can go to the blog help center and also they have a uh, documentation around api and let me show you a bit of a pricing here in the pricing you can see free tier 100 queries one data store three reference or three queries per day so i think it's per month per, per so but just three queries per day which is fine but of course if you see real value in it which i do of course right now you can see that um, the pro or the enterprise version is quite good because i think even in pro one just 10 queries per day very very low i guess so i think they should increase it that doesn't seem much even in the starter one, sixteen dollar is quite quite a lot if you're using chat GPT four or open interpreter or GPT assistant and you're just paying twenty dollar, I think that is uh, I would say that they should increase this bit here. The rest is fine. Anyway, um so that's it guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. Very impressed by it and uh, I will be uh, keeping an eye on this tool because I'm very interested in seeing how it interacts with AWS Petrock when it happens. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're already subscribed, please share it among your network as it always helps. Thanks a lot.